and welcome back to thecrochetcrowd.com. I'm your host, Mikey, and in today's tutorial, we are gonna explore a brand new pattern, and this pattern we are calling is Let the Games Begin. This is an opportunity to be patriotic and support your country all at the same time. Within this pattern, we realize that we can change the pattern at any point and make it customized to look like the, the flags of our own personal country. Whether you would like to have Canada, Italy, Germany, the US, or any other flag colors, this pattern is so cool. Now you don't have to have striping, you can do solids, you can do a mixture of different things throughout your hat. So in today's pattern, we are going to celebrate, let the games begin, and make a hat that is suitable for you. In today's tutorial, I will be making a UK inspired version, and some of these flag colors are very similar to each other. So it's all about playing with the colors to make it more one country versus the other, even though the colors may be the same. So let's get started right now. So here's a close up version of the hat. There's some advantages to this yarn versus other yarn is that this yarn is a chunky weight. So if you're gonna substitute your yarn, look for a chunky weight in order to make this happen to follow the pattern exactly. What you will notice with this particular yarn is that you will not see any slip stitching going on without the pattern. This yarn is so thick and the way that this pattern is designed is that you will never see it even though we are doing slip stitching. With this we're gonna be having some stripe work down here. Look how these pop. Yes, it's really something that we're gonna be doing something very differently in comparison to other tutorials and then we're gonna go down. So whatever the main color is, the top here going above, you're going to need two balls of the Schockemeyer SMC Boston. This yarn is really unique as it's 70% acrylic and 30% virgin wool and this is absolutely wonderful. So in the UK version, I'm gonna make the top blue. I'm gonna make my stripes all white but I'm gonna go red, red and red. And so you can just mix and match the colors in order to support your country in order to make it kind of fun and fabulous. And don't be shy, this whole band here could also be one color if you wish as well. So let's begin working on the tutorial right now using the Schockemeyer SMC Boston Yarn. So to begin, it's asking you for a size K or 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and it says with the MC, that's main color, so that's the top of the color, says chain four and join with the slip stitch to the first chain to form a ring. So I wanna leave a little bit of a generous string right here because I can uh, put that in with the darning needle later and I wanna create a slip knot just like this. And so what we're gonna do is chain four as per the instruction. So remember this never counts as one, so one, two, three, and four. And if you really look carefully at this yarn, it looks so much more different than you would see with normal value yarn. And you can just, if you feel it, if you could just feel it through the screen, you would know how amazing it is. So let's slam in our hook into the very first stitch and pull that yarn through and this will form your ring just like so. So let me get this out of the way in the back and there is your ring that we're gonna be playing with. So let's move along to round number one. In round number one it says to chain three and count as one double crochet and then work ten double crochets into the ring and then join with a slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain and that equals for a total of eleven stitches around. So to begin we are going to chain three. So one, two and three. So that counts as double crochet in the final and we need to do ten double crochets into the center of this ring. So let's wrap going into the center of the ring, pull through and then pull through two and two. So for those that are new to crochet, I'll review that one more time. So it's wrap, going into the ring, pull through, pull through two and two. So let's uh, begin to speed up here. Remember there are slower tutorials available on learning how to crochet. We also have a dedicated uh, learning to crochet channel available to you as well. So don't be shy to use that. So we're just gonna double crochet. So in the rules of double crochet with that chaining of of three, we're gonna have a total of 11 going all the way around. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we got eight so far. We have nine, 10, and 11 and it says to join with the slip uh, join with the slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain so we just come right to the top just like so come right in pull through and through and that completes off round number one and this here is now out of the way so we can just not worry about that at this moment so 
So let's begin round number two. It says chain three, count as one double crochet again, and double crochet into the first stitch, and then two double crochet into the next stitch, and repeat from the asterisk, which is two double crochet again, into each stitch. So let's simplify. We are simply going to chain up three. So one, two, and three, like this. And we're gonna come into the same stitch that this is coming out of. Do you see that? And we are going to double crochet. So that's exactly like it's putting two double crochet into one. Just bear with me and just go with it. Just say yes Mikey. So in, in every stitch now going around we're gonna put in two double crochet in. Okay so that was two into that one. The next one is two. So continue to do that. Put two into each one going all the way around and in this in the rules of we if we had 11 last time and we're doing this we should end up with a total of 22 and I'm looking over and it does say 22 as well. So my math in my head is doing great. So continue to do that. We'll meet you back up where we'll slip stitch and finalize round number two. So here is the valuable tip. A lot of people think that this is the last stitch but it's actually coming out and looking like it is but it's not. So an easy way to tell this if we know that we ha are supposed to have 22 st um, stitches going around everything is in groups of two. So if you count the groups of two we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. We know that we have gone all the way around. So in actual fact what you're looking at here is that this here is joining up into these two and so don't fill that in because what happens is is that your hat is going to grow improperly. So just join it with a slip stitch at the end and once you pull things together it starts to make a lot of sense. Even if you have a slight gap right now when you come back around again it's going to pull it even more tighter. So don't be worrying about anything like that. So that completes off round number two. Let's move along to round number three next. So let's review round number three. It says chain three which counts as one double crochet. Double crochet into the first stitch and then double crochet into the next stitch and then two double crochets into the next stitch and then double crochet into the next. <laughs> so let's uh, review that. It's actually very simple. So what we have here is we're gonna chain three. I don't know why I always find that funny. So we're gonna put one double crochet into the same one underneath. Okay so that those are coming as if there's two into the same stitch just like this. And I just noticed I just pulled apply that was kind of weird. So you want to make sure that if you're using this deal with it right now. Don't wait and hope for the best. If you see an error like that fix it right away. So here we go. So we're gonna put one double crochet into the next. So this is what this pattern is meaning and then the next one you're going to have two double crochets into the same stitch. So your, your combination on this one here is that you're gonna have one by itself, one double crochet, and then the next one you're gonna have two. So continue to do that one and two all the way around and when we come back we're gonna slip stitch it to the top again and finalize off round number three. When you come back all the way and you're all the way around round number three your final stitch should be one by itself. So the double of the two together will be there and then your final one is by itself. And again do not get confused by adding an extra stitch right where it's opening here. Let's just join with a slip stitch and you, if you just follow it up just follow these posts up you will notice that where they are. So if you put something here you will notice that there's not a post supporting it underneath and therefore you're adding an extra stitch that is not necessary and will ruin your pattern in the end. So just join it with a slip stitch and do you see how everything's starting to come together? No slip stitching marks. It's absolutely amazing. So let's begin round number four next. So let's review round number four. It says chain three which counts as one double crochet. Double crochet into the first stitch and then double crochet into each of the next two stitches and then the repeat pattern is two double crochet into the next, double crochet into the next two. <laughs> so let's uh, begin. So we're going to chain up three and we're gonna put a double crochet into the same one that's coming out of at the bottom. Okay so here we go. So here's our repeat pattern right now and we are gonna put a one double crochet into the next, one double crochet into the next. So there'll be two standing alone by itself and then there will be two in this one. So your repeat pattern is really really simple on this thing is that we have one by itself, we have another one by itself which is two and then we have the, the one that has both the two double crochets in that. So repeat that same pattern going all the way around. We'll meet back up, do the slip stitch and finalize round number four together. 
So I'm just gonna finish up round number four and we're just gonna join it with a slip stitch and call this complete. So let's begin round number five next. Okay, round number five is exceptionally easy. It says chain three, count as one double crochet and double crochet into each stitch around. So let and join with a slip stitch. So we're gonna chain three and so essentially every stitch going around is going to get one double crochet each. So how hard is that? That's really quite simple. So continue to do that same thing going all the way around is one double crochet into each. And we'll meet back up in just a moment, slip stitch and move on to the next round. Finishing up round number five, again you just wanna make sure you don't put in any extra stitches and then just join it to the top. So let's move along to round number six next and this is the shaping of your hat at this time. Okay, round number six is looking really simple as well. So it says to chain three, count as one double crochet and double crochet into the first stitch. Okay, that's what we've been doing and then double crochet into each of the next three stitches and then the repeat pattern is showing. So let's just simplify. We are just going to chain three and we're going to put in a stitch right where this is coming out of just like we had been before and then the next three are gonna be standing alone. Okay, so the next three double crochets are gonna be by themselves. So one, two and three. So I just wanted to just to point out to you right here is that you'll notice that when I did this do you see how these two here are in the same stitch? The post is matching these two. So that's how I know that we're growing properly and then you're just basically following the post as you go around. So I just put in three so the next one must be the two double crochets into the same one and then three again. So to continue to do that same thing by uh, going all the way around. When we come back we'll do the slip stitch and move on to round number seven next. So finishing up round number six I just want to join with a slip stitch. So the next rounds are very very simple so let's begin that next. So let's begin round number seven and round number eight. It's the same thing for both. So we're just going to chain up three. So let me read the instructions. Chain three, count as one double crochet and double crochet into each uh, as you go all the way around. So essentially right now the next two rows which is seven and eight just have to be one single crochet into each going all the way around join with a slip stitch. And so when we come back we're gonna start off round number nine together. So just go around two more times uh, right at this moment just to begin to uh, move on to the next process. So finish off round Round number seven and eight. We'll meet back up, we'll do a slip stitch, and then come back up to do round number nine next. So we're now just coming back around and we are just finishing up round number eight and we're gonna join it with a slip stitch. Now I just wanted to very um, be very honest with you here that this hat is smaller than the hat that you've been seeing in the rest of the tutorials and the reason for it is that I have changed my hook size. So I've reduced my hook size to a five uh, millimeter or a size H and essentially what's happening here is that it's changing the whole level of the hat. So what you, when I put them two on top of each other you can see that they're slightly smaller than the other. So let's uh, begin. We are going to move up to round number nine. This is the last time we're going to be using the main color on the top and to, to do so, just make sure I got my hat going right in the right direction, is that we want to chain up three and it says count as one double crochet and we are going to uh, double crochet into each stitch going all the way around but this time when we come to the very end we are going to slip stitch and then fasten off at this point. So essentially you could have done like rows seven, eight, and nine to be the same and it could have said just a fasten off at the end but in this case they just added an extra line. So in this case let's begin and when I come back we'll move along to the next round. Okay, we've just come back all the way around and I'm going to join it with the slip stitch as promised just like this and we are going to fasten off. So at this point I'm just gonna take my string and I wanna leave a little bit of a generous length here so that I can use a darning needle to weave this in. The way that this pattern works is that you're gonna wanna use a darning needle to hide these strings. So I just pulled it through and tightened on to itself and I'm gonna leave that on the inside of the hat and deal with that at a later time. So let's uh, begin. We're gonna move up to round number 10 and you will start noticing wrong side, right side, wrong side, right side. So in this case this is the right side. This is the side that people are gonna be seeing to wear. So I've been going all the way around and around and around like a clock. So in this case when we look at round, row number 10 it says wrong side, WS is wrong side, join with the slip stitch. And what it's telling me to do is it's telling me to go back in the direction that I've been going around. So in this case what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the hat like this, okay, and I'm gonna join it and go this way. 
around instead. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna make the popping of, see these? They're almost like stars. And these are gonna pop out as a result of going in the opposite direction because when you look at it from the underside, you can see that it's relatively flat. So let's uh, begin that next. So to begin, I'm going to join my yarn. So it says to join A, this is meaning color, it says with slip, uh, with a slip stitch to the first stitch and then slip stitch into the first stitch and then double crochet into the next and then slip stitch into the next. So here we go. So we're just gonna slip in our hook like so and I'm going to leave a bit of a generous tail because I'm gonna wanna hide that later. So I'm gonna just loop it and come through like this. So I'm just gonna take the yarn that is going to the yarn ball. So I'm gonna take this straggler, leave it on the inside and just pull through like this. And so now it's officially joined. And so we're gonna come back into the same stitch, pull through and through and that is a slip stitch. So now we're now ready to go. So to begin, we're gonna go into the very next stitch that's available and we are going to double crochet. So we're gonna wrap the hook coming in, okay, and going and doing a double crochet. Like so. So that doesn't look unusual to what you did. So now that this is stuck underneath, I'm gonna leave that out of the way because I'm gonna use a darning needle at the end. And now the next stitch that's in line is going to be a slip stitch. So we go in, pull through, and through. And what this is doing is that it's causing it to compress, the double crochet to compress. So let's uh, just quickly again, we're gonna double crochet into the next and we need to compress that double crochet and how to do it is that we do a slip stitch in the next. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna start making those formations around. So continue to do that. So double crochet, slip stitch, double crochet, slip stitch all the way around. And when we come back, we're gonna be fastening this color off and going on to the next color which will be red. So just finishing up round number 10, we are just going to join it with a slip stitch and we're gonna take this yarn and fasten off and again leave a little bit of an extra so we can sew it into position after. So just wrap the yarn and pull through and pull it tight and that'll be good to hold at this time. So at this uh, moment you can start seeing that the shaping is really starting to turn out really well on the other side. So let's move around along to row number 11 or round number 11 is that we are gonna be going from the right side. So I was just like this going all the way around. So now I'm gonna turn it and work on the hat like I normally would and let's fasten on our red at this point. So it could be any color that you have and again leave a little bit of an extra tail. And it says uh, with B chain th uh, 3 so we're going to be fastening on this color first into a stitch. And this round is really simple. So it's the colors in between here even though there looks like there's something special going on, there's nothing special going on. It's the white here that's doing all the work. So we're gonna fasten on and we are just going to chain three. So one, two, and three. And it says with, that counts as one double crochet. Skip the first stitch and double crochet into each of the stitches around. So what, I, what I'm saying to you at this point is make sure you get into every one of these stitches. So if, don't leave anything out like so as you go all the way around. So double crochet just very simply. And you can see I'm kind of burying this tail as I go around. You can do it on this particular round here just like so. So go around and double crochet. When we come back we're gonna finish this uh, color back up and we're gonna move back to white once again. So we're coming all the way back around on round number 11 and we're going to slip stitch and then fasten off. So what I'm wanting to tell you in this point, you need for these particular one, you need to do this step once again. So you need to do the white. So you're gonna have a total of three white stripes Okay, and your stripes could be a different color. And then you got two filler colors which will be the red. So exactly what I've just shown you, doing the white area here and the red, you need to repeat the white area two more times and just a filler area one more time. So just again fasten off and I'm gonna leave that for you to be able to do that on your own. So just uh, continue to do what you've just learned for rounds number uh, 12, 13, and 14. And when we come back we're gonna do the areas of just the bottom. So continue again. So one, so make two more of these. So we're gonna do um, white, red, white, red, white. So your colors could be slightly different. So when we come back, we'll move along to round number 15. So now I have my striping in. You can see it looks pretty fabulous at this point and it is really quite fun and fabulous. So let's move along to rows number 
uh, 15 and 16. They're both the same. And again, I'm gonna join on my red yarn. And now we're working on the uh, on the right side now. So we're gonna continue to stay on the same side. We only just changed so that these stitches could be really popping out. As you can see on the inside, they're pretty flat and non-existent. So that's why you would do it for that. So let's uh, join on our new yarn. And so uh, round uh, rows number 15 and 16 are exactly identical to what you already have been doing before. And it says with the main color. So in the main color would be blue if I'm doing that. But I'm making my hat to suit my own personal needs. And so you can also do the same thing. So you are your own creator really. So let's uh, chain three. One, two, and three. Just like so. And so it says count as one double crochet. And then it says to double crochet into each stitch and going around. And then it says to turn. So when we come back on this, when we're gonna slip stitch here and then we're gonna turn the hat before we do the final one of 16. So we're just going to single crochet ourselves going all, or sorry, double crochet ourselves going all the way around. And I'm gonna meet you back up just to make sure you're clear on what I mean by turning. It's basically what you've already known, but uh, just to make sure. So let's uh, finish this uh, round off. So this will be number 15 itself. We'll come back and just turn for 16 and then we're gonna finalize off round number 17 after that. So I've come all the way back around and we are going to slip stitch and this is row number 15. And so as it says in the instructions, we're gonna turn. So let's turn the whole project and begin to chain up three again. One, two, and three and coming along on the other side. So most hats you don't do that and the reason for it is that the other side of the stitches always looks slightly different. So this just gives a bit of a perception difference when it comes to wearing this hat on the other side. So let's turn it around and you will see that it looks slightly different. I know it's really hard to tell that on camera but you have to trust me with that. So continue to go all the way around and uh, we're gonna slip stitch and then finalize we only have one round left and then that's it and calling this hats quits for today. I've come all the way around and we are just going to slip stitch. We're finalizing row 16. Slip stitch and let's turn. This is the very last time we're going around and this is really exceptionally easy. So we're going to chain one first and then we're going to slip stitch into each stitch going around. So the slip stitch is just in, pull through and through. And this just makes it a nice thicker um, border right on the very edge of your hat. Also make sure, here's a tip, do not make the slip stitching to the point where it's starting to stretch. You gotta give it a little bit of slack when you're doing this because if you are too tight, you're gonna totally change the circumference of the hat. So do that. When we come back, we're gonna finalize this tutorial off for today. And let's meet you back in just a moment. I've now come all the way back around just going to slip stitch to the beginning now and we are just going to fasten this off. Now at this point you're going to need a darning needle just to kind of like hide this. You know you can weave it in but it, it always tends to fall out. So let's uh, get our darning needle out just right now. It only takes just a few moments and this is just like so. This yarn is, is a thick chunky and uh, even though this needle is pretty small, it still fits in pretty good. And essentially I wanna go back and forth three times. So I'm just gonna go back to in the direction of which I came, just underneath like so and pull through. And when you pull it, don't, you know, make sure you do give it a little bit of slack and then go in to the same area but just slightly different fibers so that it captures in. So when anybody's pulling on this, the top of the hat just like so. They can pull as much as they want. This will never fall out because it's basically going back and forth underneath all the fibers just like you see. So at this point you have a really nice clean finish. You can go right into there and voila you would have a hat just like so. And so you're going to want to go back through your stitches on the inside, hide those in as well and voila you'll have the most perfect hat to celebrate the games. So it's